Hi, welcome to this session on uh, UI test automation. I want to look at the benefits and why we do uh, test automation at the UI level. First of all, let's just consider all the benefits generally of test automation. So why is it that we want to do test automation? We want to do test automation because we get fast feedback, of course. Um, we, uh, if we run a test manually, it can take a little bit of time to find out whether the code that we've written actually is uh, what we want it to doing what we wanted to do. Um, but if we run a quick automated test and get the result back, that helps us to know that we're going in the right direction. We're making progress on firm foundation. So we want to get that fast feedback that automation obviously provides. Um, Boring tests are a problem for uh, anybody who's done any bit of testing doing the same steps over and over and over again. And of course, if we automate those things, um, computers don't mind that at all. And they are quite happy to work through and churn out those boring uh, sort of steps. So we can replace those things with automation as well. We want to speed up time to delivery uh, and automation helps us to do that. If we've got a, a sort of pipeline of activities all the way along the line from getting an idea to developing our software out to delivering to the customer, if we can automate all those processes including various tests along the way to check that everything is going okay and speed up that time, it's going to be much more beneficial for everybody. Test coverage can be increased by, by test automation. Test uh, automation can be done out of hours, we can do things overnight, uh, times when people aren't uh, working normally. Uh, test automation doesn't require lots and lots of testers to be doing lots of tests because one tester can do multiple tests even at the same time. And of course we can do tests that we wouldn't have considered doing manually because we would have thought it was just not worth doing all the very different variations of those tests. Uh, but automated tests we can do that very quickly and therefore we might want to do that. We also want to have nice repeatable tests that are consistent, that are run over and over again, making sure that we're doing exactly the same things. And of course, manual tests, very easy for testers to cut corners, uh, whether they're being a bit lazy or whether, because uh, they're used to stuff or whether um, they just make mistakes. Uh, automated tests are always 100% consistent, always do exactly the same thing. And then finally, some manual tasks are just very difficult. Um, to, uh, to do manually. It's very difficult sometimes to do, for example, performance testing. Performance testing uh, can, could be done manually, but it's very difficult to do that. So actually using tools to enable us to do that is very beneficial. And if we have uh, a software that's being developed, it's not easy to get access to actually do that testing manually, then the uh, automation is going to help us enormously doing that. And the key thing about UI test automation, and the reason there's a lot of debate, is when we start looking at some of these benefits, we realise they're not quite as beneficial. So if we think about, uh, are they actually benefits or not? Think about fast feedback. Um, yes, we want to uh, understand whether our code is working by making sure those tests are completed. But if we think about fast feedback at the UI level, what we really want to do is know that it's being used and w is workable in the way that users really want to use it. And one of the best ways to do that testing, of course, is to get real users doing the testing. The danger is, if we do test automation at that level, that we can actually uh, reduce the amount of interaction that real users have with the user interface. And therefore, we may understand that it's doing what we think it should be doing, but we may miss out on uh, the, the knowledge, the experience of, of real users testing it in ways that, and finding out things that we might not otherwise have found. Um, so, not so much of a benefit at the UI level. Um, boring tests, uh, the same still goes. Yeah, UI tests can still be just as boring. And uh, you know we want to free up our skilled testers to do uh, interesting, useful work. Um, but again, the prerequisite for boring tests is that at the UI level, that the UI is stable, that we're going to repeat these tests, these test steps over and over and over again. And of course, very often, you user interface development um, can change very regularly. And uh, the, the, the actual code is not necessarily going to be that stable. So we may not get a point where the tests are, that, are so boring that we need to repeat them uh, and automate them over and over again, uh, because it, it is just going to be so volatile. Speeding up time to delivery, absolutely running uh, a, 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 an automated test, executing an automated test is very often going to be a lot quicker than executing a manual test. So the time taken to run the test is going to be much more reduced and therefore potentially we speed up that delivery time. However, the time you to actually create the test 
and to manage them and to maintain them and to all the various things that a peripheral will get around creating those automators may actually take longer. So it, uh, ironically, we could end up taking more time uh, before we're able to deliver because we spent all that time on doing automation uh, at the UI level. Uh, test coverage. Again, it is just as much as any of these things are potentially a benefit for UI test automation. But the key thing about test coverage, again, is that it requires us having a stable uh, interface that we're working on and that the tests that we might want to increase our coverage the, the, uh, around the core, core tests we might want to do via the UI interface are actually worth doing. And it could be that we spend a lot of time creating, maintaining and, um, and reporting on uh, tests that are actually fairly peripheral and don't really give us that much of a benefit. Repeatability. We want to be able to re repeat our tests consistently, uh, not cut corners, absolutely same at the UI level as any other level. However, as we've already discussed, um, if the interface uh, is actually changing fairly regularly, um, then the benefits of repeating tests on that stuff are not as great. And then finally, Difficult manual tests, things like performance testing, for example, same uh, same uh, benefits in doing our automation. Uh, we still need to be able to uh, to run those sort of tests. However, if you take something, for example, like performance testing, um, the very often we want to uh, do our performance testing via, say, the service rather than via the user interface, because the user interface is going to add extra complications um, that are going to that are not necessarily going to give us the results of our performance test, but are actually going to give us functional issues potentially, and we might want to uh, avoid doing that. So, so again, although we could potentially um, uh, automate some uh, UI. Uh, activities that would be difficult to do manually, um, it may be that we can just avoid them completely by doing those in other ways. So there are benefits to automation. Those benefits apply to a certain extent to UI test automation, but as we've seen, uh, more in a more limited way. So what, what we're saying is that not that there's no benefit in doing UI test automation, but actually we need to think a little bit more carefully about why we're doing that and how we do that. What's our strategy? What's our approach to test automation at the UI level? And there's a very helpful model often referred to as the test automation pyramid that helps us think about that strategy, helps us think about that approach to test automation. And the, the pyramid, uh, simply like that, just to remind us that this base layer that's a bit broader, where we're thinking about our unit testing, at uh, this layer, um, there is a, a lot of benefit in doing test automation, which is why uh, there's more of it and uh, it's going to form the foundation of what else we're going to be doing. It's relatively simple for a developer, while they're doing a bit of coding, to write a little unit test around that code. Um, it's fairly little investment. Um, but they're probably going to use that, that test code, they're going to use that test over and over and over again. The code is probably going to change uh, very little and therefore they're going to get a lot of return. So our return on investment is much higher uh, the lower uh, uh, levels that we're working on. So our unit testing, we want to be focused on making sure that we get lots of benefit out of that test automation um, and therefore do lots of uh, test automation at that level. At our higher level then, at our UI testing, our ROI, our return on investment actually reduces. It can be that there's a fair amount of investment needed to create these tests, to maintain them, to work on them. And if the interface is changing on a regular basis, the return on that is going to be a little bit more limited. So low return on investment, right up to the sort of the pinnacle there of our pyramid, where there's going to be some tests that are really just not worth automating at all, uh, that it's just impractical, the, the return on investment is sort of so negligible that we just want to keep them as manual tests, we're going to get more benefit in actual fact from doing manual testing. In the centre there we've got our uh, service uh, level testing, and service testing uh, can be relatively uh, relatively easy to create, very little investment, so uh, a little bit of investment, but we can get more um, more return on that, you know, generally we can use those more often than our user interface tests and therefore uh, a moderate sort of return on investment uh, for doing test automation at that sort of level. 
Okay, so this model then, this test pyramid, helps us to think about how we to approach test automation. And um, not that we wouldn't do UI test automation, it, it is a beneficial thing to do, but make sure that we thought through it carefully. So one of the, one of the things we need to think about then when we're thinking about doing our test automation, how, how do we need to sort of do that? Well, firstly then, of course, um, what we want to do is make sure that our UI automation, our test automation, um, is part of our bigger approach to test automation and where we're focusing on doing far more unit testing as an as a absolute base foundation and also plenty of service level testing as well. Um, so, f so firstly, we want to make sure that we are doing plenty of this stuff, and make sure we, that we focus on that. And to a certain extent, there is no value in trying to automate our UI if we are not automating this stuff already. So first, of, first and foremost, let's automate our unit testing, automate our service level testing, and then uh, work towards f automating our UI testing and get the additional benefit of doing our UI testing as well. Um, what we want to do, as, and a second and off the back of that, is where possible, let's push down that UI testing to our service level. If it's possible and if it's feasible, if it makes sense to test the logic of how the interface interacts with the, uh, the uh, lower uh, levels of the code, let's actually use our service level testing to do that. Um, and in that way, let's avoid um, getting that sort of lower return on investment by trying to do tests that actually we can do at a lower level. So let's push our, our unit interface testing as much as possible down to our service level testing. If we do need to test the UI, and there is going to be times when that is going to be useful, we, we, where other tests are not going to cover the things that we want to cover at that UI level, then the important thing is that what we want to try and do is test that UI in isolation as much as possible. One of the key things that breaks test automation is where there are lots of complicated interactions with various different things. What we want to do is repeat a test over and over and over again, um, but uh, if it breaks for a reason that's not what we're trying to test, th then obviously we get very little value from that. So let's isolate that UI, let's use things like stubs and, uh, and mock out other aspects of the system if necessary. Let's isolate the UI and make sure that we test that and make sure that we know that it's the UI that's the actual thing that's breaking and then build it into our test automation framework so we can repeat that over and over again to make sure that consistently is working the way we expect it to work. Alongside that, um, another aspect in terms of not just having isolated UI tests, but actually let's keep all those tests independent as well. So that's a generally good principle for all test automation, but particularly at the UI level, what we don't want to do is have tests that are dependent on people running through various sequence of activities that must always be, do be doing in various different tests. We more we must always run test one, then test two, then test three, and test four, etc. Let's try to create independent tests. And that takes a little bit of thinking through, but in, if we are able to do that, it means that we can run those tests at any particular time um, and check out particular aspects of the functionality without having to run every uh, test and losing out on some of the benefits we're trying to get, things like fast feedback, repeatable tests, that kind of thing. So independent tests as well. And finally, in days gone by, when people talked about UI test automation, we, they used to use uh, tools that ostensibly recorded the, how the users are interacted with the software and then played those back as an automated test. Those tools were terrible, they never really worked, and by and large, they're, out of, uh, they're just out of the window these days. Um, in their place, there's a whole uh, other range of tools, um, but particularly tools based on the WebDriver API, which enables you to test web-based UI by providing access to various elements on a web page. And that uh, provides a, a much more robust and much more stable way to actually test the um, user interface uh, than these uh, uh, tools of yesteryear. Okay, and that's it. So in this short session, I've just tried to outline some of the benefits of test automation, how those are a little bit impaired if, when we think about our UI test automation, but that actually UI test automation is important and is beneficial if we consider that um, uh, some of the important aspects of that, particularly thinking about this pyramid approach, let's focus on that, those lower levels of test automation, but let's get the benefit of UI test automation within the, the rounds of a general strategy uh, for uh, testing and a general strategy for test automation specifically. So hopefully that's beneficial and thanks for listening.